two youngest people that you ever did see. Younger than springtime, I'm a newborn baby. And the show is gonna surely make you shout. Yes, ma'am. We're talking about five questions with James and Jam. Yeah, that's it. Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm telling you. Oh. I'm telling you. Yes. Good, I mean, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Five e Questions with James and Jam. <laughs> His name is Jam, and my name is James. Um, I just had a technological emergency L like right during, the, during the theme song. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. During of the 17-second theme song, <laughs> everything went wrong, and I almost died. But everything's fine, and I'm back in my new setup. Well, fantastic! Yes, we're getting we're getting new looks today, new new mm -hmm. views of yeah. the of the studio. The studio is looking mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, oh yes, thank you, Celine. I was just about to say. So the only way we know that you're here is if you give us a quick hello in the yes. chat in the comment section. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook, and you can watch now from our website. But we're so excited to have you. All. I know this is the first time we're like you can stream the show from the website, I which know. is like I know we Gro fancy growing up. By brain. we, I mean. You fancy. <laughs> Although I feel fancy. Occasionally I feel fancy. Oh my gosh. <gasps> John Picaro is here. John Picaro, Carolina Kino, Christine Sheps Th Strong, our regular Thursday night crew. Tom, Tom Lorio, Lorio. Oh, I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> Tommy Lorio, he's in the bedroom. Oh, hi. Hi. How does hair? Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, everybody. Everybody. This is this is like it's all happening. Everybody. Oh, hello, Imani. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so, welcome to Five Questions with James and Jam. Yes. Yes. How was your week? Um, it was shitty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going lie. around. Yeah, it's I'm going not going to lie. And today was today was a sad day. Um, you know, I am I am uh I am doing the thing that show business people do where we smile when we are sad. I had to go to a mm -hmm. friend's Zoom funeral today who died from mm -hmm. COVID on Tuesday, which was already shocking um, mm -hmm. because it was just like a whiplash to get that funeral announcement yesterday. But I'm not going yeah. to, I'm not going to dwell on the sadness of it. He was a, he was a manager that I used to work with and he was also a friend. Um, oh. Sandy Gunner um, was his name. And um, oh my God, he would flirt mercilessly with me, <laughs> like mercilessly with me. And he'd be just like, you're the most beautiful, glorious thing I've ever seen. Oh my God, you're delicious. You're so talented. You're so wonderful. And I'd be like, stop it, Sandy Gunner. But I secretly, like I was loving it. I was loving every minute of it. So I will miss him, but I will hold him deeply in my heart. So, yes. but hey, we move on. We do our, mm -hmm. we do our show because it is nine o'clock. Then <laughs> it's time to do a show. Um, How was your week, my darling? It was okay. I like finished some sewing stuff I had to do. I sent some things out to folks. Uh, 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 wait, 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 just don't, don't just like wash over the fact <laughs> that you're sewing. If you I all made... have not seen, he has this this denim duster that should be photographed for Vogue. It's lovely. It's floor length on me and it's floor length on Christina that's wearing it. Um, so I made her one and I made myself one too, but it's lovely. It's I start. I was supposed to make a swacket, like just like a sort of like long cardigan-y thing. Um, and I said, I want to use this denim fabric instead, which is actually just really thick and weird. Um, so it came out like this long denim duster. And I feel like I'm in, what was that cowboy movie with like Emilio <laughs> Estevez? <laughs> Remember that in the Emilio 80s or 90s? Maybe young like Guns? Young Guns. I feel like I'm in like Young Guns 3 when I wear it. Um, but I have no way to wear it right now. Young Guns 3, the faggotry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I made a denim one. I made uh, a, like this weird checker print one. I made a solid gray one for myself. And then I made a cardigan that is for my friend, Allison. That I, oh. So that was my week. Okay. Young Guns. That was Young my week. Or, 
tombstone. Um, well, we had our, our little pre-show with Miss Leslie Rodriguez Kritzer. That was lovely. We've been vocalizing all day today. I love it. Leslie. Um, I'm excited because I have been a fan of Leslie Kritzer's for years. And um, I, we got to meet her. Well, you had already met her, but she came to a yeah. strange loop, and that's when I first met her. And I think she came. She, I think she came to the show two or three times, if I'm not. Yes, mistaken. she did. Yeah, she she came, immediately yeah. was like, "I need to come back to this, so I'm going to need more tickets, please." <laughs> and I was like, "Do it." And um, then she came to our closing night. I remember she came and like hung yeah. out with us all night at the yeah. closing night, which was so fun and so lovely. Um, yeah, and then which, uh, we went to see her in Beetlejuice. Yeah, um, she got us which, to come and see her in Beetlejuice, which... She was amazing. She just is amazing. She's just like, for me, for years, she's been like, why is she so funny? Why is she... Like, she's just so talented. Like, and I've just... She's been in all of these things that I've been like, I've just seen you on stage for years. And like... Now yeah. I've like hung out with you. Leslie is in the weird. backstage area, just like looking like, look at these people like talking about me, like I'm not here and I can't hear all of this. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I will tell like one of my. Well, I'll I'll wait wait um for her to come on to tell her my favorite um one of my favorite performance stories of hers, um oh. from the early days. Um, oh, uh, Caroline said. <laughs> I think so. I think Caroline definitely arranged those tickets. <laughs> God bless um, Caroline. Um, so, yeah, Leslie Rodriguez Kritzer is about Kritzer. to come. Come on, it's going to be delicious. It's going to be wonderful. Get ready to be into it. Yes. Um, is it time for our first segment? Um, I think it can be time for our first segment. Or what? What? Do you, what, what, what? What did you think it was going to be? What? What do you think? Well, I mean, did we talk enough about um, Leslie Kritzer and how wonderful she is? Leslie Rodriguez. No, and, like you know, she Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. She, yes. She, she's been. And, she's, she's been on Broadway seven, eight times. She's been. Yeah, this you know, Beetlejuice. I saw her first in Legally Blonde. Yes, uh, yes. I also saw uh, a catered affair. Can I tell you a catered affair? I have a catered affair story too. Oh, I ugly cried. Oh my god! It, like I have to tell that story. Don't you, you love that? Like I ugly cried during that show. Um, um, Sondheim on Sond, right? Sondheim on yep. Sondheim. Um, mm -hmm. sh yeah. Uh, oh, rotten the dirt. Rotten. Dirty rotten. The, no, 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 not dirty rotten. Oh, something rotten. Something right. Something right. <laughs> um, uh, yes, L. Morgan. There's. I'm giving you things. There's like I have switched it up. This is the new. This is my new set. Um, <laughs> oh. We're playing with lights. Her Becky T. Uh, shoes almost. Oh, killed that's me. right. I heard her tell a story about her playing Becky Two Shoes that I would like uh, some clarification on. All right. I think we we're gonna. To obviously been asking her more than five questions. So it's going to be yeah, 27 yeah. questions. Well, because there's so much. There's so much. Like, we could go the Broadway stuff. There's also, like, the, this TV stuff that's all happening right now. She's doing. Stuff she's on um, Bridge and Tunnel, which is on Epics. Um, and then it was just announced that she's going to be on in, in uh, The First Lady, which is going to. Is it Showtime? Uh, I think well, it's Showtime. Yes, Showtime. It is Showtime. Yes. And, like, everybody's in it. Uh, but for me... One of the highlights is that Leslie is playing Martha Graham. Um, so yeah, I have so many questions. So many, so many questions. Um, Imani, um, um, so this is what is happening, Imani. The show is going out on both Facebook and YouTube. And most yes. people are um, on the Facebook page commenting. But we see your comments. So comment, uh -huh. comment yeah. away, my honey. Um, we see you. We see you. We see you, Imani. <laughs> All your name, we say it. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, Leslie is coming out. So, so I think we should move into our next segment, which is, which is... of course, uh, three, three minutes. minutes. You didn't work on a theme song, did you? <laughs> I didn't, which is why I'm not near the piano. But I'm going to figure it out. You don't have. I want to be the. 
I think I maybe think, eventually. I think we should come up with a spontaneous new three minutes theme song each week. <laughs> yes. yes. My friend Carrie and I, when we were in high school, we were such idiots. We would, uh, I had this TV theme song, piano playing book, and I would play, we would call people and prank them, and I would just play TV theme songs. And she'd be whispering in the background, we'd call on three way, and she'd be like, now play Knots Landing. <laughs> and I'd play it, and she'd be like, playing it too fast has <laughs> made that we had nothing to do oh boy clearly um, clearly all right let's let three minutes this is the segment we do uh we're just we have three minutes we want to just riff on something that has come to mind <clears throat> and this week our three minutes well, is should, wait should i play the clip first and I then think, we'll show it? i think we should play the clip after oh okay all right yeah okay because okay. Our, our three minutes this week is, well, you, you, I will, I'm starting, here we go, please hold. Okay, okay. Yep, and the clock is going. Um, our three minutes this week is on the, uh, the lost art <laughs> of, is it lost? Or the unspoken art of black side-eye. Mm -hmm. um, now we've done we've talked about side eye before and we've done some little workshops on it, but it's interesting to me how a lot of people of color can have conversations without saying a single word. Without saying and a that, single word. Right. And that, that is up to them to decide. So when we get to this clip later, I I have questions. But we thought we would first do an exercise to show you that we can have a conversation without saying anything. So I I have things for you. Do you have things for me? I do have things for you. Okay. Okay. Well, who would like so, to go first? So I will start. Um, James, I would like you to demonstrate for our audience today uh -huh. with silent side eye. Uh -huh. Who made this potato salad? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I actually I actually talked about that in therapy today, <laughs> but like obviously, yeah. Um, ask me a few more because I figured out I, I need to ask yeah. mine all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then the next one is, oh, this is Aunt Beatrice's potato salad. <laughs> And now the third one is, I know you're not fixing to get another plate. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth one is, mm -hmm. trifling Shanitha, here she come again. <laughs> it's because you chose Shanitha that I lost it for a second. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what is it with Shanitha? She's trifling Shanitha, here she come again. <laughs> it's just a very subtle shake you don't have to do too much now mine are all you are the same person <clears throat> okay but i i need to see these change from one to the next oh, so okay. the first expression is um your it's covid days this mm -hmm. it's the world is terrible yes. and we can't really go anywhere um you're invited to a wedding you go to the wedding and you see your ex with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and you find out she's singing at the wedding. But she's good. <laughs> I don't know why I loved I don't know why I loved that whole journey. Um but here's the here's the reason why. And I feel like we can do that brown person to brown person. But then there's this movie that came up. It's uh, called Black or White. And it's starring, um, oh, what I never remember her name, Shit Pie. <laughs> Octavia, Octavia, Octavia Spencer. Spencer. It's yeah. Octavia Spencer and Kevin Costner. And is the movie. It's called Black or White. It's directed and written by a an extremely white man. And the, <laughs> <laughs> there's a scene that I'm just curious how it was written and how they were directed. And it is, is a, a scene between two black women. And if you could please roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay. If we do go ahead and move to hearing that, that's not gonna happen again, am I right? Cause I won't put up with that. 
You are correct, Your Honor. It won't happen again. <laughs> acting ladies and gentlemen acting I, I just it's like we're allowed to do that but i'm really i want to see the script to that so yeah, yeah like my, my three minutes is on the lost art of black side eye and my question around it is are, are people really writing scenes like that? Or how did you direct them? What did you say? Can you just go do that? Do that black thing. Do that thing where like two black women, like how does that, who wrote that scene? The man's name is Mike Bender, who wrote it. Oh, who wrote the gosh. scene? Who directed it and how? Um, because it is an art to yes, do that. Yes, it is. But, um, you didn't press the three minutes, did you? I did. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I pressed, I went to my, the clock, but I didn't hit start. But, but we're going to call that three minutes. That, <laughs> well, exactly. Why did we understand it? Why did we notice we is capitalized, mm -hmm. under, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! This whole conversation, wonderful. <laughs> Caroline, all of our conversations are wonderful. Um, shall we? Shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Bring Is it time. It's time. The wonderful, the scintillating, the glorious, the delicious, the glamorous, the scintillating, transcendent. Transcendent. I, mean, I need to get ready. Rodriguez. <laughs> Yes, lotion those elbows. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We lost you for a second. You need to, yes, lotion those elbows. Oh my Hi. God. <laughs> <laughs> she is here. Hello. She is here. She is here. I always let my husband bring in my lotion just so that I could do it. And then I was like, watch me go out of frame. And then all of a sudden, it's like, where does she go? I mean, I'm probably going to re-moisturize multiple times during this. I mean, oh you know, Penny. um, Al Morgan Lee is already just going, oh my God, she's so excited that you are here. I miss you, Al Morgan Lee. I miss you so much. And I love just following you on Instagram and you're just the best. Um, how are you? Leslie, yes, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I told the, the boys earlier that I'm Alicia King it. I'm not wearing any makeup tonight. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? My face is tired and it's living in its natural glory. <clears throat> uh, and it's, it's a beautiful natural glory. It's beautiful. Thank you. It is I'm good. Beautiful I'm good. Natural glory. Um, Honey, you have done all of the things on the Broadway. Um, I have loved you. The first time I saw you was in a musical called um, The Great American Trailer Park Musical. And to oh this day, you, had, oh you walked away with, with that show and you had this one line. There was like this moment where like the three biddies were like talking about and they're like, Oh, I think they're talking about two pigs in the thingy thing. And the other right. one is like, I think they're talking about rolling around in a schmoopy doo. And then <laughs> this one comes up, she goes, Oh, it sounds like they're talking about fucking. And I, <laughs> I was like, Who is this woman? What is happening? And um, that wig, just that wig. <laughs> that <laughs> wig, that wig. Um, so from. There have been some wigs. So from that moment, there have been some wigs. I was I was a fan, um, and then also the catered affair um, story. I ugly cried seeing that show. I had I had gone to do a weekend workshop called the Creative Dynamic from this company that I used to work oh. for, TAI, and huh? um, and it was one of these like workshops where you like look at where you block yourself and you go past the blocks. So the Saturday night, oh. I buy tickets to see a catered affair. And so of course I'm like all- After this workshop? 
after after uh, we're in the middle of the workshop. We haven't come to the end. This is the Saturday. Oh. So I go that Saturday night to see a kid at a fair. I'm like, oh, it's great. It's a Leslie Quinter show. It's going to be funny. That's, <laughs> that's why we closed. <laughs> because everyone thought the people in it were going to be funny. And they marketed so I was expecting wrong. funny. And so, I anyway, mean, okay. that show was so touching that no. I began to like ugly, ugly cry, like <laughs> sobbing, weeping in mm -hmm. the theater. And at the end, you know, everyone is leaving and I'm just sitting there hunched over, bawling. <laughs> and I see the people on either side of me just kind of like turn the other way and exit the, the, out of the aisle. Oh, you were you were that oh, person. I was that person. And then mm -hmm. and then like uh, Usher had to go, sir, you have to leave now. Oh, oh. It was that kind of show. It really, it really got you. But I think a lot of people did because they were like Harvey Firestein and Faith Prince, and, right. and everyone's like, Wait, I went in thinking uh -huh. like I was ready. I was ready to laugh. I know. We're like, oh, are we? Yeah. Oh, they say it's a play, but they're gonna sing, right? <laughs> they're gonna sing like big numbers. Yeah, and it was this quiet, like intimate, like. Sure. And yeah. it was devastating. <laughs> and and hi, Chris Pasika. My friend Chris is watching from LA. Hi. I have his, Chris, I have his it. Yep, it's right there. Um, <laughs> but we weren't allowed to wear makeup. Okay, this is funny. <gasps> My friends and I weren't allowed to wear makeup in the show. No. What? But we, we what? proceeded to add a little bit, like a little. <laughs> Something like we weren't allowed to wear lashes because we're simple from you know living in the Bronx sure. in the fifties. Yeah, but yeah. Faith was like, <laughs> I need a little something, a little bit. And I, then we opened, and the reviews were bad. And then we found out we're closing. So meanwhile, I was like, you know what? I need to work after this. Okay, <laughs> so it was all of the a little bit, just a little tinted moisturizer, maybe. <laughs> um, oh my so god. Eva say never stop saying I love you gets me ugly crying. Me too. Um, schmoopy doop, don't steal my schmoopy doop. That's mine. Schmoopy doop schmoopy is my doop. general word. Um, and Chris is saying, You look, you look amazing. amazing. I love Chris. Hi, Chris. Makeup is a non-negotiable. <laughs> I know, Morgan. I know. Oh my God. Um, my, my first time. Morgan always my first be time was, uh, Literally, but like it's gorgeous. It's, it's a gorgeous face. Oh. And then my first time was legally blonde. She knows how to light a face too. Oh, right? Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> I mean, it's a good Jillian dollar first industry time, in that apartment. Right. My I'm first time seeing you was in, um, legally blonde, um, and that's where I fell in love. <laughs> Aww. Um, Thank you. And then. Like, so my thing was, you know, to meet you after a strange loop was like, oh my God, I, like we met so many people during that, just in that lobby that I was like, we would always talk during the show too of like, do you know who's here? Do you, Cause you could oh, see yeah, everybody, everybody in the yeah, audience. And so I was, was like, a full on fan girl. You in the came front twice. row. No comp, I wasn't asking for comps. I didn't want comps. No. I was like, here's my money. Here's my money, here's I will my pay money. for this. How many tickets I, can I get for everyone I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need 17. You Elliot, you brought Elliot with you from- I did, I brought Elliot there. and then I brought someone else and I don't remember who, was it Vadim or did Vadim go? I think it might have been. It, I, I think Vadim came. Vadim. Yeah. Yes, Vadim did come. The second time, I think. We're huge fans, we're yeah. like yeah. huge fans. No, and um, then we got to see you in Beetlejuice which was after that. So fantastic. Which was my Crazy. favorite moment of that was where you had got me tickets to see it. I could mm -hmm. see you crawling off the stage to go and change into Miss Argentina. And I was like, yes, let's How the hell else was I going to get out of there? I was like, flip right. over a couch, exit, put some smoke there. <laughs> like, Halloween spirit this shit out while I exit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a deer, and I'll exit over here. <laughs> Truly. Um, this map that was the first time, <laughs> that was the oh. first time that I saw, like, these, it's all things I knew, but I love your bio, 
when I was trying to like find info on you, your bio, which I remembered from um, from Beetlejuice, was about you being a proud Jurican. Jurican. And now I am officially a very proud Jurika. I added my right? mother's maiden name to my, to my name. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is like amazing. Yeah. And uh, did, yeah. did people like, did people respond differently to you when they like. When literally the name on my dressing room door all of a sudden said Rodriguez and people are like, what? Like they really? knew. Well, they right, knew. Right. Like, everyone knew, but. Right. You know, it was it it was something that I had thought about doing for a long time and I really mm -hmm. felt passionate about it. And then here I am playing this Hispanic character on Broadway and I'm like, yeah. oh, it's time. It's time. And I want to represent and I want to represent, you know, my mother is, is Puerto Rican and and she, it just felt right. And I was like, I literally called Equity. I was like, I'm changing my name. <laughs> I love and that. I called SAG the same day. I called my agent yeah. and I said, by the way, now it's not legal because to go through that whole thing is a pain right, right now. Right. But um, I just changed it like within one day. I was like, I'm doing this. And I didn't ask anybody. I didn't tell anybody. I love that. Literally people just showed up to work and they were like, and I told management, I was like, um, right. so I changed my name. See you half hour. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. change it, but it's, yeah, I mean, the, I think the response has been good. I've gotten like questions about it and, yeah. but well, mostly what, what it's- they ask? Like people, why? I guess people just I guess, want to know. Yeah. Yeah, they go, people why? Want to like, and I was like, cause I want it, I want it to. And, yeah. and it's, you know, sometimes uh, if some people, you know, again, it's not, it's not legally changed, but it's like, I don't know. I'm. It felt like it was right, and so I just did it. Yeah, and it feels good. Yeah, no, I I love it. I think yeah. I'm all I'm all for it. I think embracing your heritage is here the important. Here she is, thing. Oh. Mama. He's always I'm, there. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I I love it. So we've officially gone into our, our our five questions. I thought we were gonna. That was that was question one. Yeah, I thought we were gonna gab. See, I like to ease in. I, I don't even like to announce it. I just like, like to like slip in. <laughs> why? Why? Right? <laughs> I mean, but, but I guess I you know I have a follow up question on that. I mean, like, I guess in terms of the climate that we're in, mm. uh, did. Was there something, well, I guess, you know, you, you answered that. You, you, you've been thinking about it for a while, but I just wonder if it was like, hmm, I don't know. It seems like, it's <laughs> like, like would, people, would people like react weird to it? Well, I, I'm wondering like, you know, was it because like, uh, when you first started out, like, I don't know that diversity was as accepted <laughs> or as like we were celebrated, having meetings you know about I mean? diversity. And so it's like, um, I wanted it, to do it years and years ago, yeah, years yeah, and yeah. years ago, and was told not to, was literally really? told not to, but was, but I wanted to a long time yeah. ago. It was like, no, 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 everyone knows you by this, everyone knows you that, and then you get to be uh over 40 and you're like, I don't care exactly what people think. I mean, I've I care what people think, but you know what I'm sure. saying? It, it, like, this is who I am. This is who I am. And also, you know, and this is something that it's like, when you're growing up sort of feeling like you're, you know, you're mixed and you don't full, you're one thing and another thing and you kind of grow up uh -huh. and you're, and I grew up in a time, you know, in the, when was I in like middle school in the early nineties or whatever, there's no Jurek and there's no, right. not where I grew up, right. you're either. Italian or you're you are like this Jewish or you're this or you're the yep. Irish and the mm -hmm. it's not how it is now you know yeah, it's just right and that was that was kind of hard you know like yeah. I, oh yeah you know because I mean and we can go into this is gonna be like a two-hour conversation about <laughs> my mom and not wanting us to you know my mother was very proud of her background but also wanted us to grow up uh, very white a lot of times and like mm. very just uh, suburban wealthy not how she grew up um, in the Bronx and very poor and so it's wow. like there's a lot of things in there there's like a whole bunch of stuff I'm gonna write a book about it um no oh. but, yeah no, I may, actually yeah. but you know for me it's celebrating both of my 
both sides of myself. And I think I was yeah. fully like, I was like, oh, wow, this big thing just land, this thing landed in my lap. And now it, it was like a sign. I was like, oh, I yeah. have to do this and I have to do it now. And it feels yeah. right. Um, and she it made you know, total sense. Never, mm-hmm. Yeah. It made total sense. Yeah. 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 Yay. Fantastic. That was a lousy follow-up question, but what a you, t- oh, you spun it into a beautiful, it's, wonderful answer. <laughs> I'm I, I'm like, I'm really an open book. I'll totally I, I mean look, look at that. I know, Morgan. 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 There really is. Morgan. Yep. Well, there really you can is. print this. You can print this. Yep. <laughs> we talked about There's it. something there. Something there. Yeah, Morgan. Uh, but Morgan. What's our second question? <laughs> James um, is like cocktail. <clears throat> so yes, um, you're playing Martha Graham in the First Lady. Yes. Um, you are known for your Broadway and theater work. You are you are celebrated, but you've done TV. You've done TV. This is not your first time doing TV. I'm yeah. just curious, right. what is it that you love about the world of TV? <laughs> what I, do I love about it? I yeah, guess it yeah. depends on what your what your what kind of TV you're doing. So, like, mm. um, what I do love about it is that, first of all, it's I'm not going to say it's new. It's it's um, it stimulates me in a different way, and it forces my brain to work a different way. But because we're theater people, and we are used to doing things on the fly and quick. Right, right. Uh, with little to no rehearsal, changing things immediately, we are so prepared for that atmosphere. Unless you have a thing where you're not good at that, but I feel like that's been an asset. So I'm very comfortable getting on set and things changing and, okay, can you do that? Can you add no, this? Like, so okay. that's, right. Um, the money is better. The um, money is so much better. I mean, depends. yes. Depends. <laughs> sure, sure. I do a lot of cable, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it, it's just, um, it's exciting. And also I haven't, you know, I've spent most of my 20 year, 20 plus years doing theater. So when I do more television, which I've been able to do in this past, like, especially this past two years, um, it's like, oh, this is really cool. This is, yeah. and learning, really learning from other people on set. Like I mm-hmm. learned from people in theater, of course, but it's different. I, I've been doing it so long. So it feels more, and I'm not gonna say it feels easier. It's just more of what I know. Whereas when I'm, I'm on right. set, I'm constantly like, oh, I wanna know who the DP is. Oh, I wanna get to know uh, them. So yeah. I can understand uh-huh. why they use How that, that works. and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and get behind, so I can sort of, I just, I love the process. The process is uh-huh. different than theater but the thing that I was telling my friend Chris this, what I admit, what I like about theater more is that we we get to really rehearse. We get to mm-hmm. really rehearse. Yeah. We get to really know each other. When and you're coming play. on and and play, you know, again, it depends on the TV show. But like for for um, for First Lady, when I came in to do the Martha Graham stuff, I come in, I do the Martha Graham stuff, and then I leave. It's not like because it's a huge right. series, right? So right. Um, I don't get to play as a, especially in that show, it's a historic sort of big, big thing with many, many right. people. So you come in, you do your chunk and then you're gone. It's not like you get to live and breathe a piece with everybody and get to evolve. You have to show up ready. Yeah, yeah. To be mm-hmm. Martha Graham, day one. <laughs> there is no... <laughs> Well, find your Martha Graham. You're like, I don't right, know. what right. do you think? There's yeah. no, I don't know what you think. It's just right. show up and hit it and go. Yeah. Um, well, so I, I, I have a follow up. We have to, a clip. For, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I have a, fo- well, you know, I'll play the clip. I'll, we, 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 we'll, I have we'll a question, but I need, to see the, I need to see this clip first. All right. So um, we're going to play. <laughs> do you want to explain from, the, explain oh, the clip? This is your bridge and tunnel stuff. Yeah. Um, so are you guys playing the whole thing? Well, yeah, yeah. So I couldn't. I didn't. I, I couldn't edit it out. But um. But yeah, we're, we're playing your your bridge and tunnel stuff. So set it up for us. Okay. So bridge and tunnel is a show on Epics. Um. It just mm-hmm. finished airing a couple of weeks ago. I play 
And we shot this in October in during this uh, whole shebang that we've been going through this October. Yeah. I play the, it's set in the eighties uh, on Long Island and I play a mom. I'm the mom of the star of the show who's um, dropped dead gorgeous as you will see. Um, and uh, I play her mom and you know, I care. I love, I love her, but I worried she's, you know, fucking up her life. And I'm also a piece of work. So that's all you gotta know. <laughs> all right. Um, Hair. Oh God. Is... <laughs> Do I have to watch I it? it. <laughs> you, I, you, no. I think they're lovely. They're, they're I know they're fine. They're fine. They're, they're okay. lovely. They're funny. <laughs> um. I'll solo that. Oh, uh, I should have given it to. I thought you could download it. Oh well. Well. <laughs> what is happening? Oh no. Yeah, look at me. I could just narrate. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, when I told you what he said before about me going to Alaska and he's on one path and you're on another path. You're on two different paths and those paths don't cross. <laughs> Sitting here feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> I haven't this is my what? Wait, can we go back? <laughs> I need you to. <laughs> Oh, I mean, look at that. I want to hear these. The hair is amazing, first of all. Oh my God, my hair is terrible. It was raining outside. See, that's the brilliant thing about lighting. They made it look like it's a normal day. It's storming raining outside when we were filming this. <laughs> wow. Yep. Are we not hearing anything? I don't oh. think we're hearing anything. Oh, you're not hearing anything? No. no. Oh my God. I knew there was going to be some, um, wait, what? I'm hearing it. Okay. Hold. <laughs> hold <on. laughs> Please hold. Yeah, I we weren't hearing anything. You weren't That's hearing a saunter, Morgan. Yes, and that was a vintage like exactly. Kimono situation. That was a saunter. That was my mother's saunter. Anytime right. you see like a saunter mm -hmm. like that with a cigarette, mm -hmm. straight out of the 80s. Look for the oh. share audio. Okay, oh Lord. Um, I thought I'd tech this, but clearly I did not. Oh, um, okay, here we go, here we go. All right, okay, here we go. A new job, yeah. You sure? I don't want you doing something stupid like joining Jimmy in Alaska. I'm not <clears throat> going to. Even if I did, why would there be such a bad thing? Because it's Alaska, for Christ's sake. And secondly, we talked about this when you broke up with him in December. He's on one path, you're on another path. We're on two different paths, and those two paths <laughs> don't cross. And I don't want to see you undoing all that just because you are sitting here feeling sorry for yourself. Home. I need a favor. I want to wear my Chanel dress tonight, but I'm going to need you to alter it for me. It's been a few years. I might need some breathing room. Wow, I haven't worn that since Daddy died. <laughs> Big guy got planned for you. Please don't call him that. You know he doesn't like it. Since you asked, Stevie is taking me to the rainbow room. If you can believe it, it's our six month anniversary. You know, I really can't believe it. I'll have to alert the presses. <laughs> <laughs> There's more, but it, 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 I, there, it's a lot. Like, how much can you hear that? Like, how much can you listen to that voice? No, no, I could listen to it all day. Here's the thing. Like, it's these okay. are not these are not funny scenes. However, mm -hmm. I watching them. Even if I if I didn't know anything about you, I'm like, oh, this woman knows about comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, not that like I hate when people are like, oh, I can tell she's a theater person. It's not that. It's no nope. like I think of you as someone who's utterly hysterical. You you have a a natural like Thank gift you, or what in the moment is funny, which is a really mm -hmm. hard thing to do. Um, which means you're in tune with like the rhythms of situations and the rhythms of other people and cadences and all of that. And I see it in all of this. So, yeah, and that's, thank you. That's a very high compliment. That's always I, when I, that's what I live for. That's awesome. Thank you. I, but it completely reads in there. So I want to know that that was my, the next question is what is funny? Like oh, what, God, what's funny to good. you? That's such a like good you have, There's something um, natural about it in you. So I, I don't, I, what is it? What is funny? 
It's okay. This is going to sound so the first thing that literally it's like the universe just so, told me to say was it's joy. Yeah. It's joy. There's mm-hmm. what I, there's something and it's what's funny also is first of all, it's joy. means it's the best gift in the world to be able to, to have that gift mm-hmm. because um, it's just, it's just awesome. And it's not something I take for granted because I know how it makes people feel. And it's one of my greatest pleasures is to make people laugh. So to have that mm-hmm. ability, I don't take it for granted. A. B. So, so I think everything that I find the most funny is totally rooted such an acting thing to say. In truth, though, when someone yes. says something just like think about your friends that are not necessarily funny. But what you find (laughs) funny about something they say, the way they say it, it's so natural how it pops out. I am constantly stealing those things and collecting (laughs) them and putting them in the back of here like an aardvark eating ants. Like that's how the natural things, pauses, things that people say, weird things. I just, I pick the, I think they're just brilliant. And those people are not funny, but the things they do are funny. Right, like the truth behavior is funny. Is funny. Behavior, behavior. Yeah, yeah. And, tr- and truth is funny. Sometimes I'm trying to think. Um, I th- I like uh, why you know physicality is funny. Certain things, like mm-hmm. why do we laugh when we see someone fall? A lot of times, <laughs> right. Yeah. right? Why do we laugh? Right. Why do I still laugh? And this is terrible. When I see that woman falling down the stairs in the liquor store, when the guy opens the thing and she turns around and she falls down those stairs or Charlotte takes a tumble. <laughs> right. Because when Charlotte is on this, she goes, maybe in time, I will leave you back. Maybe we could be together. <laughs> It's fucking right. funny. And she is so uh, Becky into it. And she's into it. She's like, yeah. she's seducing someone. It's real. And she falls on her ass so hard mm-hmm. that it is so, It's and I don't know if she released it in the world. I'm sure she could laugh about it now, but it's like. It's, I it's would like just, a follow up on her. It's there's something physically about it. I don't know. And I'm not making fun of her at all because I'm no, sure no, no. She, at some point she was like, Oh my God. Like if that was me and that shit came out on me, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to laugh at some point. And I've fallen on my ass many times. Anyway, to back to your question, I think it's what is, I think you cannot um, learn how to be funny. Uh, I don't no, think you can no. learn. I think you can learn how to write good jokes that you can. Mm. learn. Uh, uh. I don't think you can learn timing. I don't think yeah. you can learn that moment and you guys have experienced it between an audience and you where you know you can learn it through experience, but to instinctually know that half a second where if you waited, you would not get the laugh on the next right. thing or the look and the move and then you do the line mm-hmm. or this the thing where you turned around and you pressed the lotion and you went you turned <laughs> just so slightly and you went like this half your body a quarter this way probably would have lost it the way and the way you looked around that's art that's 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 you you can't you can't uh, teach that you can't you teach can. that you can't no but yeah. it's a gift. It's and why to this day do I re- I remember it? I remember it like it was yesterday. I can't. I don't remember seventh grade. Why would I? <laughs> but I remember that exactly that moment because it was mm. so. And also, what's funny is surprising. Uh, um, uh, what's the director's name? I'm forgetting. He always said, he said it's a surprise. That's why people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So when you yeah. did that, it was a surprise. No one saw that coming. And it was just like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, that is the funniest and the weirdest place to do it. Like, why would anybody be lotioning their right. elbows in the middle of this thing that just happened? Anyway, that's my, that's a really long answer. It's like 945. No, that's I, the longest answer I could have given. Th- that was a good answer. It was a good answer. Look, Carol Burnett, um, right there. Oh. Speaking of funny. Carol. Um, there's a, wasn't there a Becky Two Shoes moment? Of oh, oh, 
when um hi john when um well becky Chichi, I know, john I was before. saying he's yeah john was saying he saw you in boston do yes. the show yes uh i damaged my tailbone because that was in san francisco when um i decided to is there do a the fall in there oh yeah there's a fall and I decided, well, in San Francisco, I decided my first or second performance to do the Pratt fall and not land on the fatty part of my leg, but to land right on my coccyx bone. Ooh. Because I thought that was funnier to go vertically mm -hmm. like right. this, which is hilarious, but it hurt instead of yeah. fall on the fatty part of my leg. So that's one thing, but right. no, no, no. What I used to do in little, in, in your in town is during the hot dance number or the whatever it looked like West Side Story, there was a light. I was not supposed to be on stage left in this particular area on this particular wall, but it had such, Morgan's gonna appreciate this when she's still here. There was a, such a beautiful ray of light on that wall over there that I would Whoa. spin, spin, spin out and land on the, on the thing <laughs> while everyone's frozen. I wasn't supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be like on the staircase or whatever. <laughs> But I'm there, and that light is like hitting me like my hair light is like. <laughs> and I'm living my best life on tour because. Mm -hmm. What were That's they going to do? Supposed to do. <laughs> no one's going to be like, you're on four. You should be on three. Like, no right. one's saying that. Right. I, I made it look better. So. Oh, my God. Oh, I love that. Oh, Tom <laughs> Lorio was wondering about Carol Burnett. Carol. Oh, yeah, she's there. She's one of my favorites. And then, um, um, wait, why am I? Oh yeah, Catherine O'Hara. Um, oh. <laughs> why don't I just put my glasses on? Catherine O'Hara and Carol Burnett are on my wall. Um, and Morgan says, she found the light. Yes, everybody. Honey. She did. <laughs> <laughs> I just had... Oh, um, are we having technical difficulties, I Mella? had the loss of an earbud. Everything is fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Um, um, Oops. all right, so I'm going to switch gears here. Yes. Switch gears. Um, so, oh, James, can you turn your, your ear down? down? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so it's this thing, right? Like we do the show because it's eight o'clock. We do the show because it's nine o'clock, right? And, mm -hmm. um, and life happens right like so like mm. life happened today and um you know for me i had this this year of becoming a caretaker for my mom um james mm -hmm. um has been on the other side of it you have had um stuff like that with your mom um it's this whole thing of being life happens right but then also Places, ladies and gentlemen, places. Life so, happens and life happens. Yeah, life happens and life happens. And so I, I, and I guess- being the, the funny the, person too, oftentimes. Right, right. It's, like, a, it's I, such a, it's a, a load to carry. I don't, I don't think people <sighs> like understand that like when we're out there eight times a week doing high kicks and da 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 da, that we, are, we also have like a life mm -hmm. that's going on. And so oh, like, yeah. how mm -hmm. do you- how how have you, um, how do you hold both of those things? How do you how do you live life on life's terms and then places please happens? Mm. You know, like do you do you have you because you've been on Broadway so much, right? Like it's not mm -hmm. it's not like you're brand new. Like you have lived life while you've had to go on and do the show because it's eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, so how do we do both? How, yeah. how do we, how do yeah. we do that? Um, sometimes more successfully than others. Some yeah. literally some, some nights I've, I mean, and as you were saying that I was take, I was taken back to a moment when I was doing the honeymooners at paper. Mm -hmm. This was mm -hmm. my mom was diagnosed with dementia, uh, frontal lobe dementia a few years ago, and she's at mm -hmm. the actress fund home now, but a couple of years ago, well, for years, I've been dealing with her decline just mm -hmm. to like give you the bullet points. 
living on her own, getting phone calls from the police. Um, mm. You know, it started. It just right. started and, and not compliant and all these things. So I'm sitting in my dressing room and I'm playing Alice Cramden, who everyone knows from The Honeymooners, a, a famous, another famous character, real right. life person. And I get a phone call from the police um, uh, right before places that my mom um, set uh, her apartment on fire or either it was that. And with these things, as you know, when you're going through stuff, there's so many of these things happen. So they all right. start to meld together. Mm -hmm. So it's either yeah. one of two things that they found her driving or it was the one time where she started a fire in the apartment and almost like burned down the entire apartment building. But I was about to do a show, a very right. high comedy sort of show. And I got that phone call and I'm hysterical in my dressing room. Mm -hmm. And I just, I dealt with it. She was okay. They were dealing with it. And I had to do the show. Uh, and you know, you look in the mirror as you do, and I don't want it to sound dramatic, but it's true. Like you're hysterical. My dresser is there. I'm like, okay, Debbie, just give me like a few minutes. I'm going to get my stuff together. And it's just like it would be in the movie, right? right you right. wipe your eyes dry. You, I almost like, and, and I almost in my own way, in my mind is like, God, just help me, help me walk through this with grace. Help me show up. Cause I want to die right now. I want right. to fall. I need to get into a car and go save and my go mother. And I, right. and I have a whole thing. So mm -hmm. you yeah. put, you put back on your thing and you go, all right, one, one scene at a time, yeah. literally one scene yeah. at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's how I did it. And that's basically felt. I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop sometimes, especially dealing with the Same. parent who's not well. I'm, yeah. I'm always waiting. As soon as that phone rings with that number, I, my terrifying. heart stops every time. Mm -hmm. And that's how life has been for a while mm -hmm. um, where I've had to like switch gears. Also uh, not, not fall apart and also realize that there's times where I have to take a break too, because yeah. I do need to work and I do need to, to, to do right. Right. You our actually art. Do, you have, to, you have yeah. to do both things. We have to do both things. And the bottom line is, and it's the hardest thing ever, is that we can't save them. Right. What's right. the inevitable, what is, and exactly. It mm -hmm. really gets you, doesn't it? It gets mm -hmm. you right there because there mm -hmm. is nothing I can do to stop what is gonna happen. Powerless. Like, it is literally letting, surrendering and going, I'm doing everything I can. Mm -hmm. The things that are out of my control, it's a serenity prayer. It's like, it's yeah. the things that are out of my control. Mm -hmm. I have to accept what's in my control. I, and, <laughs> and it is really the hardest thing, but anyone who has dealt with illness or um, loss, you know, I'm, I, you know, I heard you talking about your friend today that passed. I mean, there's so many things. So it's like, we love them fiercely as much as we can, and we do mm -hmm. as much. And then, listen, I have not been inside that nursing home, not to get deep on you guys, but right. in over a year. Yeah. So I've talked to my mother through a glass wall all winter. Mm -hmm. And then before that, outside six feet apart with masks on. But I have not, right. the only time I've been able to hold my mother's hand during this entire thing, and I've been working and doing all this other stuff, is when she was in the hospital because she started falling and doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And even through that, what got me through it and what got her through it? Humor. Mm. Yep. yep. Laughing. Okay, mom. Oh my God. Yeah. She's like, I'm seeing rats. I'm seeing rats. I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who they're messing with. Yeah. yeah. Do they know who's in this room? Yeah. I was like, and she started laughing. I said, Yeah, you know, they're not gonna mess with you. I go, Mom, why would she work here if there's rats? There's no rats. <laughs> She's I'm like, and if you saw one, they're definitely gone now. And I'd make her laugh. And that's the gift. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Like, I can you do that for 1,500 people. And you can do it in real life. And it's yeah. actually meaningful. And it helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so my book will be on sale at the end of this <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> we'll post a link. Called The Laughter Within. <laughs> the Laughter Within. The Leslie, Cri <laughs> Leslie Rodriguez Critzer story. <laughs> Eyelash right? extensions are not optional. <laughs> Morgan, they're not optional. Look. The, there's actually a free set of them glued to the back of the book. That's right. Oh, only the hardcover. 
Right. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah. so uh, I appreciate that question because that's real life. Yeah, and that's why she's really always is. here. Yeah, that's why I mean, she's always here. You know, I think sometimes people don't like realize like, you know, you're taking care of two thousand people at Paper Mill Playhouse while this is happening. And 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 I and, and I guess that's the the thing. Like, you mm -hmm. know, as actors, we learn how to take care of two thousand people. Like we are responsible mm -hmm. for the journey that these people are on. And so mm -hmm. in a way we kinda learn how to do it. And I love that whole thing about humor. My my mom now just has automatic words. Um she had a really? stroke. And so, so she sorry. only says she only says right 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 but when she's trying to form another word she says boris and she says for whatever reason she says wow. boris mm -hmm. and so um the thing that i have have done is i've made boris a poor person so every time she goes am i is boris under the bed again are you are you having an affair with boris <laughs> what did you and boris do today and like she'll just start to laugh and yeah. like yes you can see that like she takes a breath and da da da, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that whole thing, humor is it's it's so powerful in in the caretaking. Most of, I think I think most of what we do or have chosen chosen to go into it also kind of comes from them too. Yeah, I know yeah. that like a lot of my humor actually came from my mother. Yes. So as as my mother was in the hospital, that was something that we had to use. And it was usually led by her. And I was like, how, how are you doing this right now? Oh, that's right, you're who you are. Yeah. So that's what, that's, I have to follow by example. <clears throat> so, right. Yeah, and I love that we are essential workers. Like We are, yeah. we, and, and that's the thing too, you know what? It's, it's, um, it's a gift that you can give mm -hmm. your mom that, that moment of respite from yeah. whatever is happening. Cause we don't really know what's happening in here. Yeah. Right. Right. That's scary. You know what? Someone said that to me and I know it's getting late, but I'll just say this really quick because I never know who's out here. Right. That sometimes we're so worried about what's going on in their head, but we don't know. We don't know what their experience of life is right now. Mm -hmm. We know how we feel because we're scared for them, but right. we don't know. But so it's, it's so, uh, it's so hard. It's so hard. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, but we have that gift. We can make, we can always make them laugh. Yeah. 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 We can always right. make them laugh. So anyway. All right. I'm going to move. I'm going to move on. Um, wait, James, turn your <gasps> earphones on. What, uh, uh, just a touch. More. Can you yeah. still hear me? I hear you. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, I had the pleasure of of being in one of the workshops of Beetlejuice with you. And one of the great joys was in the lineup, I got to sit beside you on one side and Carol Shelley on the other side, which was oh kind my of God. Like amazing, right? Um, but um, one of the things that I loved and I learned so much watching you work and like you've said you said a couple of things to me that i've i've held on to like you know i did the thing um and you you would go don't give them all your funny yeah don't don't, don't give them all your funny because they're going to hear it all hear it and then they're going to cut won't it be funny. Right. yeah it won't be funny you're like and and like you kind of went like you you have some funny don't give them all of it <laughs> was like, until the audience gets there until, until we have our the presentation mm. then sprinkle it with a little bit more so in the moment yeah. they think you're a genius when you've yeah, been yeah, thinking yeah. about it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And so so one of the things also that I saw you do, I, I remember we had this like entrance that we did and we were rehearsing it a couple times oh and like this one partic particular line and you kept coming back and you're going, is that line funny? And I was like, you're getting a laugh on it. And you're like, and you said to me, I'm getting the laugh. I don't think the line right. is getting the laugh. And right. I was like, well, what does it matter, right? Like, laugh is a laugh, right. right? And I remember we were, we got like a 10 and I was walking out and you were with um, Scott and um, Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. yeah. And I heard you going, guys, I don't know about this line. And, um, and you were talking to them about this line and they were like, but you're getting the line, da, 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 and you're like, mm, I th I'm getting the line, but I don't think it's. And yeah. went, did my ten minute business, came back, and you were still with them. And the thing that was so interesting was the next day, 
they came back with something that was 10 times better. And it just mm. made me, it just made me, I, I was very impressed with how you collaborate, right? Because mm -hmm. I've also seen people do that in the most Poorly. disastrous way. We have seen people do it do horribly. It horribly. Yeah. But somehow you're able to like, and that you have the bravery to do it. Because <laughs> like, because I would, oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Off Broadway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> also that you have the courage to do it because like, mm -hmm. I, I would just kind of like go, I'm getting the laugh. I'm not gonna tell them that their thing isn't working, but you well, did and it was, and it made the show better. So I'm, I'm interested in hearing about- Collaboration. Collaboration and how, and how you approach <laughs> moments like that to go and like go, okay, let's make this thing better. It's, okay, so there we we read the room right yeah right we, you got to read the room you have to you, gotta, you always you, it's like okay well uh there's sometimes where i don't say a damn thing because i know <laughs> they're not going to listen right. and we're doing a reading and i'm out of here in 29 hours or whatever right and they don't really care so i'm not gonna right but i test the waters i test the water mm -hmm. and then if it's something we're involved with right longer and longer and longer uh -huh. and I develop a rapport because you have to here's the thing it, we're all doing something of labor a labor labor of love yeah especially with comedy and we're trying to make it better we're obsessed with laughs we're obsessed with landing right. them and I know those guys are right and they right, trust right. me so once I got trust established I felt like I could go to them honestly and say uh -huh. as someone and I only go when I'm certain when I'm certain right. that I know I could do better, mm -hmm. but I just need help. That I, I go to them in a way that's like, you know, I just feel with a, a sense of respect, but always, and knowing I might not get something new, but at least I tried. Right. Um, and I, and I, you know, a lot of times we're in these rooms and no offense to like straight white male creative teams, but there's a lot of straight white male creative yeah. teams. Yeah. And so a I've lot heard. of times, right. <laughs> And um, a lot of times they're not used to women um, raising their voice or pe like women like me mm -hmm. raising their voice and being like, mm, and challenging or whatever. I have, I, and I've been in rooms where literally I've not gotten to fights, but you know, there's another show that I worked on that, uh, not a Broadway show, but mm -hmm. where they fought me. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, <laughs> It was a, a female issue, and I turned to uh, one of the female stage managers. I said, "Does this thing bother you? Because it bothers me. Right. This is sexist. What we're doing here is wrong. So, uh, you guys, it's all well and good, but like, we need to. This is." And I opened my mouth, and that, and they got really pissed. And then mm -hmm. I said, "This character needs a song in the show. I'm just going to tell you this: this character needs a song in the show." If this character doesn't get a song in the show, you're basically telling the audience that this woman is not important and what she has to mm -hmm. say is not important. Right. She's just ba 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 ba, and you're just you need to. She's the one that saves the day. She needs a song, a a better one. Hmm. And they wrote a better one. <laughs> yeah. And I was right. <laughs> you know. So there's a there's a Michael R. Jackson has a quote that I love that I, I know he has said that you get to decide what kind of collaborator you want to be. Right. Yeah. You get to decide that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, there's no truer statement. Like yeah. you can sit back and like, know that like, okay, this could be something, this could be something. But if you don't say anything, especially if you have the rapport, if you have mm -hmm. the trust, if you don't say anything, then it's just like, Right, and a lot of times, you know, they they don't know how to write. Like, I can just speak for myself from my mm -hmm. my experience. I'm like, these are a bunch of men. Yeah, they they don't know how to write for women. Yep. And these women, most of the people in the audience are going to be a lot mm -hmm. of females out there. Yeah. It's for this particular show, mm -hmm. and they're going to want to see this character sing, and be uh, the woman in the relationship between right. these two people. Right. Save the day. 
And you have to think about that. And as a woman in a room full of not a lot of women, except one of our stage <laughs> managers, I was like, I'm not crazy, right? And she's like, no. <laughs> but also we have to represent ourselves. And now yeah. like we, we all, all of us need to advocate and yeah. it's not about, because people go, well, you just wanted another song. And it's not about- yeah, it's not about that. Right. No. I was like, cut the song in the first act. This is the one that's important for yeah. the story. The yeah, first yeah. act one's just funny and like, booga, booga, booga. who cares? Mm -hmm. This is about this, this is about their relationship. This is, and I, I come always armed story, 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 yeah. dramaturg Morgan, story based. That's true. That's it. And anything that's, because I'm like- I'll, You I'll want the you truth. Little, Yes. You just and, want and, the truth. And I'm comfortable. Now on a TV set, I don't say anything. <laughs> I'm nope. like, okay, where are you going? So I'll just, and I'll tell you a quick story because it's a good one. Yeah. Real quick. So I went down to do First Lady. Now I signed an NDA, so I can't really talk about anything except the fact that I played Martha Graham. So what else do you need to know, right? So um, the audition story for it is insane. Mm -hmm. But the the point the, the the night before I'm in Atlanta in a hotel room and I'm like okay and the first day was kind of like rough it was really hard and then we were filming this other thing and I get the sides the late late and they cut the scene they cut this whole thing and I was like you know what it's okay like great less pressure I have one line in the scene fine I'm good. And actually it makes more sense for them. They don't really need all this entire scene mm. to make this whole story make sense. It They cut it, I totally got it. Um, and I accepted that. So I'm hanging out on set and I'm in my makeup and in my thing and we're shooting the shit and it's 70 degrees. People are putting their little plants outside so they can get some sun. I mean, it was great, it was great. I was like, oh, this is an easier day, right? And the producer came up to me and she was like, you got the new page, right? Now I'm thinking she's talking about the new page from last night where it's cut. Oh. I'm like, yep, it's great, thank you. And then the PA walks up, he's like, here's your new page. And I look at it and it's three paragraphs. <laughs> and he's like, we're gonna be shooting this in 30 minutes. <laughs> so what do you do? they rewrote this scene and cut and I was like great like I was right. happy I was like cut it out like it makes sense oh sorry it makes sense so in 30 minutes I had to relearn what they conceived this thing which they gave me more which I was like great but I had to relearn it in 30 minutes thank oh, god we're theater god. people um and I got together with some of the other people in the scene they helped me and I and I framed that piece of paper and it's going up on this wall yeah yeah. Because it's just a reminder too. It's like we know if you know how to roll with it, if you can adapt, constantly adapt. Yeah. Like TV, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna be like, you know what? I think that we should go in for a closer <laughs> shot. Right. Because right. I just think that I don't do that. In right. theater, I'm like, I definitely shouldn't cross stage right. It makes no sense. I have to go behind the thing. Like I know right. that language. Right. But I I'm framing that piece of paper because it taught me that. I do belong. I do belong there. Just like I belong on stage, I belong there. Just like you guys belong there too. There's no difference. It's just, all right, what, what do you need me to do? What, sir, what do I need to do? Okay, great, I'm there. Yes, and. Yes, and. <laughs> I, I, I love I love that you said, you know, that TV is kind of the same language. And in a way, like, I don't know that a lot of theater people, like, um, hear that. But, like, no, they're, te they're terrified. We've, done, we've done tech and we've done preview periods of new yeah. shows. Like, I mean, Strange Loop got new pages constantly. There were yeah. scenes that were cut, mm -hmm. cut, like, things got rewritten and da 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 And you had to, like, okay, all right, all right, figure it oh, out. And then, oh, they're back in tonight. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And personalities. Here's the other thing. If you know how to navigate a personality on set you or win. in a show. You win. If you yeah. can do that, you absolutely win. Yeah. And if they're your boss, especially like <laughs> if they're your boss and they're like, and you read the, you go, okay, I see what's happening here. Again, <laughs> reading the room, reading the temperature. I see yep. what's happening here. Sure, what do you need? Uh, yeah, no, 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 you need to do this, this, this. Okay, great, faster, awesome, great. Done. Back to one, great. 
Awesome. Mm -hmm. Was that better? It was? Okay, great. You want me to keep doing it? Okay, great. Yes, and. What, are, yes, what and do you need? Unless it's like bark on one leg and woof, like in, you know what I mean? I, right. I, it's not about me, but I'll adjust. I'll adjust. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, and. Fun. Yes, leads, and. Um, leads into our quick five game. Quick yes. five, quick five. Quick those those five. were our five questions. You, you those were our five questions. Those were they all were amazing. five questions. Amazing. Um, we actually got through all of those. Um, um, so this is a quick script. Game. Even came on stage, El Morgan. Don't speak. There out was of a time school. where you could. Yes, people <laughs> might bring a script on stage if new pages show up. Um, so in the quick five, literally, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, we will read some. They're not all absurd questions. I like absurd. Hit me. Th they are questions that we want answers to. Uh, <laughs> the first thing that comes to your mind, um, I will start. Okay. You okay. ready, Jam? Yep. Okay. And <clears throat> Tony Collette returns to Broadway in what musical? Sweeney Todd. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. As, as, as Sweeney. Mrs. Lovett. Oh, as Mrs. Lovett. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, I know. I should think outside the box. <laughs> uh, well, this one will help you. Audra McDonald is collaborating with Megan The Stallion on a new musical called what? Shit, I'm loaded. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, Mandy Patinkin, yes, no, or maybe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's the first yes we've gotten. I that think. is the first yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, your cell phone goes off during a Patti LuPone performance. Where do you hide? <laughs> I don't. I don't hide. You know who else said that? L. Morgan. I don't hide. You don't hide. You just stand there. You get that phone off. Yep. Like you are too strong with like it. Like, no, what? I did it. Like, yep, I did it. You don't hide. You just own it. You own it and you get flame. You just let her do what she's going to do. If you hide, you're showing weakness. You can't. This is the last That's one. That's right, Morgan. Um, oh at God. the 1968 Tony Awards, Carol Channing presented Pearl Bailey with a special Tony Award for her work in the all black Hello Dolly, starring Cab Calloway. Who was not cast as Pearl Bailey's understudy? This is not multiple choice? This is not multiple choice. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who was not cast as Pearl Bailey's understudy? This is a famous person, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. In the 60s. In the 60s, 1960, well, it would have been, yeah, 1968. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a fascinating- I have no idea. Uh, the answer is Maya Angelou, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a whole story about it. Yeah. And she didn't get the part because of Pearl Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did it's not know. It's, wow. it's, it's a little bit of a sad story, but like, yeah, Maya Angelou almost was her understudy yeah. in the all black version of um, Hello, Dolly. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Jesus. That's wow. insane to me. We found that out the other day and I was like, that has to be a thing. Um, that was it. <laughs> that was it. You survived. That's it. You survived. That is it. Yes. <laughs> the um, story oh, LaDonna. is LaDonna wants the story. Hi, the story is that. Um, the director, the producers, everybody loved Maya Angelou. She was a single mother. Um, this would have been her first like huge job. She needed the money desperately. And Pearl Bailey said, I don't want that big, ugly girl playing me. And she yeah. wouldn't let her be the understudy. Yeah. And there's a PBS documentary about the life of Maya Angelou. And her son tells this story and like breaks down crying because he was the child, like at a, he's like, my mom needed this job. And when she found out she didn't get it because Pearl Bailey thought she was some big, ugly girl. And I think it was something like she got it wow. and then was like fired from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, it's a heartbreaking story. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
But that was it. Those were our, those the five questions. And we like to leave on a lovely high note like that, right? <laughs> I know, I know. Those were our five questions and our, our quick five. Um, my love, I want to spend 15 more hours with you. I do. Well, we do. We need to talk more about moms and all that. We should. I know. Yeah. yeah. There's, really three, there's three really great perspectives here on the whole thing. We should whole, do outside. Process. Once the weather gets warmer, we should meet up mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. yeah. And I have, I have to say, you know, um, I, I so loved working with you on, like, Beetlejuice, I hold... I hold very close because I needed to lose that job in order to be able to do a strange loop. I learned a huge mm. lesson of doing that show. Well, you and again, I can't. I didn't even get obviously to shower you both with all okay. the love in the world for your both of your performances in that show were extraordinary, and makes me miss theater more. Honestly, that show. Thinking about my experience sitting in the uh -huh. theater watching you do that show and your both of your performances and every all the accolades you have gotten it makes that's what makes me miss theater more than even doing a show mm. is thinking about how i felt watching it mm. that's what makes Thank me go you. that's why people i mean because it changes you it changes you forever i yeah. was i was changed for i was changed by that show completely yeah. and so and isn't it weird it's like everything's so connected everything really that is. happens in life is yeah. all connected yeah, yeah. Um, um, where tell everyone like what where like where they can find you? What is going on? Oh, we have them. I'm, uh, yeah, yes. I, I'm on the Instagram. I'm on. I don't go on Twitter and Facebook as much. I should, and, and I'm definitely not a TikTok person. I should be whatever. Oh my god, it's I, I, I just can't. can't. I need to I read can't. a book. But, <laughs> um, I need to read I'm, a book or write a play or something. But um, I'm closer to fifty than I am to TikTok. Yeah. But at Indeed. Leslie Kritzer, that's where yeah. you can find her. Um, so we usually end our show with one wish. Um, that we So the rationale is that genies give people three wishes and that I don't like genies. <laughs> so <laughs> we're giving people one wish. Uh, do you have a one wish, Jam? Yes, Jam. Uh, yes, so my wish is just, uh, it's a prayer. Uh, of safety and protectiveness and sanity for people. Mm. Um, just, just stay safe out there. Stay safe. We're almost at the end of it, and so um, let's not um, trip so close to the finish line. So I pray for everyone's safety, and um, I pray for your 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 sanity to be aware and do the best that you can in, in, in the final lap of this, of this journey that we've been on. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's my, that's my hope. That's my dream. That's my wish for everybody this mm -hmm. week. Um, mine is simple. I want everyone to do whatever they can to get a vaccine. I was on this like soapbox of I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like I, I had, because in New Jersey you could just be a smoker and just say you're a smoker and go get. And I was like, well, I smoked, so like, can't I just show up and be like, <clears throat> or have like some Nicorette in my pocket or something? And I was going to come mm -hmm. up with this elaborate scheme and lie. And there's, uh, uh, eh. then I was on this platform of like, okay, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't. But I just need everyone to go get a fucking vaccine, however you can. Just go get one. If you are eligible, go get one. If you are not, you can still get one. You can get one. The only way that we are going to get back to anything is by having enough of us in that boat. So get in the boat. <laughs> get in the boat. Yes. Do you, do you have agree. a one wish, Leslie? I do. Uh, I wish, I. Uh, first of all, everything you guys are saying are, I was already I was thinking about but then I wish for all the people out there who feel like they haven't done enough this year have been feeling stuck this year mm -hmm. feeling like they didn't do the things they should have done or or whatever you have that are regrets or guilt I wish for you to let yourself go of those things I to mean, give I yourself the freedom and 
and forgiveness that this is not a normal time we're living in. Yes. So if you didn't do all the things you were supposed to, whatever you weren't mm. supposed to, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. And what, what is, and the sun is coming, the weather is getting better. The days are lasting longer. The yeah. light is coming. We will get there. And there is time. You have time. Yeah. So yes. forgive yourself for all the things you think you should have and don't uh, look left and uh, don't look right at what everyone else is doing. Uh, yeah. Do you. Yeah. yeah. That's a good yeah. one, Leslie. That's a yeah. good one. Let me just show you some of the things that people are saying. Um, I'm so glad I'm going to thank God the love from the doctor, Michael, and taking a And um, um, Oh, there was another one. Oh, LaDonna Burns said, I would like to oh, see yes. all of Leslie's sweater. Tell them, tell them about okay. the sweater. LaDonna. Okay. It's called Wawa Australia. If anyone watches the Great British Bake Off, Noel Fielding, the tall British guy who's a comedian, he wears sweaters by this company. And I got one and then I bought another one. So this is this one. It's so nuts. I love it. It's so crazy. I don't I've, even know what that says. That's a, it's just like, it has a wine glass <gasps> and it has like crazy animals, like weird strippers. <laughs> what is it? It's Wawa? Wawa, W-A-H, W-A-H, Australia. You can find them on Instagram. I got another one of theirs too. And they're a small company of Australia. Their shit gets to me as, as fast as like, in, um, within a week or two when they're from Australia. Wow. And they're reasonable, but they're so, they're awesome. And it's a oh, small company. Right. I um, um, so Christine yeah. Shep Strong says, you are a oh, wise okay. woman. Oh. You know, I'm just wondering, did our show, how did our show look on, I don't know if it's streamed on our website. Can we'll find that out? <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, um, I don't know that anyone was watching on that thing. Um, everybody, come watch us next week. Yes. Um, um, so, yes. Are you Who drum rolling? Oh, yeah. damn it. Oh, wait, my drum roll is all, I swirl my <laughs> finger in a tub of jelly beans. <laughs> Kim, Kim Axum. Nabalungi. Axum. Yes, um, Broadway, uh, uh, Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, we don't we don't really know her. We know her. This is our first guest that we don't have, like, we don't know. But we, but we love her. Like yeah. every experience that we've had of her, we're like, this woman's all right. Beautiful too. So, um, right? so we're gonna, we're we're gonna, we're gonna play and um, chat with her next week. I know we didn't sing this week, but it's. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no. There's we'll a song. Some... There's there's a song in your heart, everyone. Right. Hum yourself to sleep. Sing your spirit song today. <laughs> Let's harmonize a spirit song. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You took me out to the line. Wow. I will tell you today during, we, I had to do a little sound check for my new setup here this afternoon. And wow, Jam, wow. Jam and I randomly did a duet of, um, some Aaron Neville. Oh. And it was stirring. Oh, come on. Stirring. I don't know. It was so good. Him and Mandy Patinkin are scarily similar. Oh, my God. I would love to see them, like, just do a duet. <laughs> <laughs> like you know how people like do riffs like they're always trying to like like people like uh are inspired by other people's styles or whatever like right. you didn't find anyone trying to be aaron neville after aaron right. neville came out because you right. can't be the mold was destroyed yeah it was destroyed that. there was there was no 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 they were like do. we're done we're done here we've got we've got this this is all we need it's so good, or is it? Or it's a yes also, no also, Anita Baker. She shut it down. I need oh. all of a Baker. I need Anita Baker. I mean, no one sings like her. Sorry. No. No. Yeah, that's true. In a class by herself. Yep. yep. Still true. singing. Um, 
Good night, everyone. Um, Good night. We love you. So you can find us. Um, this is this is our at. Yeah. And, um, Go find our, follow some things and. Yeah, five qjnj.com. Go watch old episodes too. They're all on our website. They're um, all on our website. Even though the live feed didn't do the thing that it was supposed to do, so you know, whatever. We'll figure that out. Yeah. You guys made yeah. me really happy. I just want to thank you. I felt like I was getting ready to do a show, and I haven't felt that way in, oh, I don't know, forever. Oh, that's that's what we want. That's the point. That was Tony. really that was Tony. Thank, thank, thank you, Kevin. John Caparo, um, thank you. Um, oh, and Monty, thank you. Thank People you, had Monty. a lot of fun. Oh, yay. I'm thank so you. glad. Um, you know, I love your funny, but I also love more your heart. And um yeah. and Thank I'm so thrilled that um we get to call you friend. And I'm yes. so um We're honored. Glad that you agreed to come and do this um with us tonight. Um yes, Caroline, I agree. It was so much fun tonight. <laughs> All right. Thank so you, Caroline. um okay. Okay. All bye, right. bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you next bye, week. Bye, everybody. Take care of yourself. Get vaccinated. There yep, are yep. loopholes for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs>